This is one on one session with the Forum IS founder and director Ayush Sinha. In this session, students are asked questions to test their preparedness for the personality test. One on one sessions are not mock panel sessions. So, Dakshita, first, uh, can you begin by introducing? Uh, sir, I belong to Hadwani district in Nainital, in Uttarakhand. Hmm. And I have completed my graduation in mechanical engineering from Govind Balapant University of Agriculture and Technology in Pantanagar. Thereafter, I have hmm. pursued master's in energy systems from Indian Institute of Technology, Mandi. And hmm. uh, my interests are uh, religious tourism, watching women-centric films and cardio workout. and uh, both of my parents are in public services my mother is an assistant teacher in government inter college uh, pahadpani in nainital district only and my father is uh, a pharmacist in district hospital nainital dikshita what is a soft state so soft state uh, is uh, the one that is not able to implement uh, laws very effectively you know that is a very negative connotation with which you are telling me a soft state that one that is not able to implement so that is bihar was accused of jungle raj was it a soft state if there is no law and order then will you call it a soft state it does not make it a soft state uh, sir uh, to my understanding uh, the definition of soft uh, state uh, was this only that uh, the one that is not able to implement laws effectively you are quoting gunar middle Okay, sir. I'll uh, look into it. No, are you quoting Gunnar Medal? Uh, sir, I've uh, not read uh, Gunnar okay. Medal on. Yes, sir. Okay, Dikshita, what is a deep state? Sir, deep state is uh, the one which acts uh, covertly. Uh, for instance, if we see Pakistan, then uh, the uh, the uh, apparently the power rests with the elected government. uh but yes. uh, in real terms uh, the uh, actual uh, decision making is influenced by the uh, armed forces so that is our deep state and what is our biggest challenge in dealing with uh, pakistan according to you uh sir so one of the biggest challenge is that uh, pakistan uses uh, anti uh, social uh, or uh, covert measures to attack us it does not oper- operate overtly so it uses terrorist uh, organizations against uh, india so that is one major uh, challenge in dealing with pakistan that it is not giving no. up its <clears throat> okay no dikshita our challenge will not we can deal with a terrorist organization that is not a challenge the challenge what is the challenge think again you are made an advisor to the prime minister of india and he asks you to talk to pakistan what is your biggest challenge in talking to pakistan sir uh, that it is not ready to uh, uh, negotiate uh, peacefully that is no, that, I, that is not the problem who will you speak to when you will go speak to pakistan so the elected government do you think it will work uh, no sir because uh, it is a deep state so the army is actually controlling the decision making there not even the army if we speak to the army do you think it will work Uh, sir uh, if we speak and if the army wants uh, uh, peace and if it wants cordial relations with india then i think then it will work if the army is of the opinion that but uh, but that is not what an army does if there is too much peace then army has no role in the yes, polity sir. of the country yes sir so even if army makes a promise will it start working Uh, no sir because it has its own vested interest and uh, that Plus, is where we are Plus there is another factor it is a deep state so hai na so therefore there will be clergy also yes army sir. will say we will disband all terrorist organization next day yes. the clergy will protest yes sir hai na yes sir so our biggest challenge will be we do not know who to speak to because there is no one power center the hmm. legitimate government duly elected does not have power the yes. hai na the army also yes. is not absolutely in control there is also mm-hmm. the problem of clergy and then there is the judiciary which has a mind of its own dikshita uh, tell me uh, so 
what is happening in joshi math there are land cracks what is the reason behind it so the uh, the disaster that has taken place in joshi math is the subsidence of land and uh, that has been uh, due to both natural and anthropogenic reasons that mm-hmm. uh, the joshi math was uh, uh, built on uh, glacial deposits and moraine deposits that were already susceptible to subsidence and uh, but anthropogenically we have uh, increased uh, the construction activities there beyond the carrying capacity of the region and uh, also we do not have any pakka drain system in joshimat so that has also contributed to saturation of soil and uh, sinking thirdly sir uh, the uh, deforestation activities have also uh, contributed to soil erosion and that has also exacerbated the uh, disaster there so that this has taken place in joshimat Nikita, we are increasingly seeing that a lot of engineers are coming from civil service, including the best brains of our, of our country, such as you. So, from the perspective of our economy, think and tell me why some of the best minds are coming for civil services. I am not seeing computer science engineers, but for other streams, we are seeing a lot of students are coming. So, what is some structural problem with our economy that people are coming for civil services? Sir, I think uh, the. Uh... Uh, the the choice of joining civil services is very uh, personal but if we go by the general trend uh, that a lot of engineers uh, come for civil services is that uh, in engineering also sir uh, mostly uh, the students who, who join engineering are meritorious students and uh, they uh, have uh, followed uh, a, a trend that uh, one who is good in study should go for uh, stem so i think that is why and over the period of uh, graduation we realize that our real interest is uh, engineering or uh, public services so they go for public services apart from this sir uh, when we talk about uh, branches other than uh, computer science that are coming to uh, civil services that the uh, opportunities in core uh, services in india are still lesser so i think uh, a lot of uh, people do not find adequate uh, opportunities in core sectors so that is why also they uh, move towards civil services and other areas where they can be in uh, decision making positions so these are major reasons sir how do you think you'll be able to use your engineering knowledge in administration sir uh, one is that uh, Uh, like my uh, masters has been in energy systems and mm-hmm. right now as a country we are also moving towards uh, sustainable energy so one area is that that i can uh, contribute uh, more towards uh, the renewable energy systems the second is uh, sir in uh, disaster management also uh, mechanical engineering has a role to play uh, for instance in creating early warning systems and uh, that also helps for this are overall uh, analytical abilities that have gathered through engineering that will also help me in administration dikshita which principal is responsible for cooling in an air cooler versus the principal that is responsible for cooling in an air conditioner sir in air conditioning we uh, regulate the uh, temperature as well as the quality of air uh in that respect humidity and uh, pollutants no, are the, what is the principle? what is what causes cooling there is a one line principle that is followed in a air conditioner sorry sir i'm not uh, able to recall i'll give you a hint dash causes cooling in air conditioner it will be expansion causes cooling okay yes sir okay. uh can you tell me in air cooler what causes cooling evaporation causes cooling is that a principle or not Ah uh, yes, sir. In uh, yes, sir. Vapor uh, expansion and compression system operates in air conditioners, and uh, yes. in air cool. Yes, sir. In air coolers, we use uh, evaporation of. Simple okay. evaporation is causes cooling. Evaporation causes cooling or not? Yes, sir. It causes cooling. You know, and there rapidly expansion suddenly massive expansion that leads to different temperature. Wonder. Dikshita, some people are concerned that you know solar panels, solar energy is also going to threaten our planet and biodiversity. Can you tell me how? 
sir as we have seen in uh, rajasthan uh, that uh, the uh, solar plants that were built there and uh, the power cables uh, were uh, threatening the uh, great indian bustard so i think one uh, reason is that that it uh, affects the biodiversity's movement and therefore secondly sir the e waste that is generated by solar uh, energy and solar power plants that also uh, is difficult to decompose so that is another reason that it is going to uh, threaten and uh, uh, apart from sir the uh, land uh, required for uh, solar plants that is also huge and uh, so that will also impact the uh, already uh, land available land scarcity that is happening so that is also going to affect the biodiversity dikshita what is your motivation for joining civil services sir uh, i was uh, inclined towards uh, public services uh, since very beginning only but uh, while i pursue while i was pursuing masters i was uh, i one of my seniors cleared this examination and i got to learn about the opportunities it provides so the very scale of uh, operation Uh, in civil services and the variety of sectors that it offers one to work in uh, that is uh, what attracts me towards civil services that there is a lot of scope for personal growth as well as for uh, uh, working for uh, the uh, society so these are major reasons sir dikshita you are interested in religious tourism tell me yes. five most important sites of religious tourism in our country um sir if uh we start by uh, different religions only then uh, for hinduism uh, there are the char dham and uh, the 12 jyotirlingas then uh, for uh, sikhism uh, it is the birthplace of uh, sikhism also so there is the amritsar golden temple then for buddhism sir the uh, bodh gaya mahabodhi temple and uh, monasteries in arunachal pradesh ladakh and himachal pradesh they are important religious places and for uh, islamism if we see then uh, the uh, uh, the um, uh, mosque in nizamuddin mosque in uh, uh, delhi and the dargahs uh, the sufi dargahs uh, the azmer chishti dargah these are major religious places <clears throat> so dikshita if you are made an advisor to the you know prime minister of india and he asked you to promote tourism you know what specific steps you will take to promote domestic tourism versus international tourism uh, so for promoting domestic tourism uh, we'll have to uh, understand the uh, the the class of uh, customers or the uh, people that we are focusing on so largely we have a middle class uh, uh, economy so uh, sir uh, one way is to uh, reduce the cost of uh, tourism and by uh, uh, providing dedicated uh, tourist circuit for instance dedicated trains or uh, airway connectivity one way is that second is uh, sir that we need to also integrate the different regions through tourism for instance we can uh, Uh, we can uh, incentivize corporate sector or even the psus to encourage their employees to uh, move uh, or, or travel to uh, different regions across the country for instance if a psu is located in north then the employees can be encouraged to move uh, travel to south and if it is located in south then this regional integration the third would be sir that um, uh, that uh, a lot of uh, uh, the meetings or the conferences that are held they can be integrated with the uh, tourism domestic tourism so these three are uh, major uh, steps that can be taken to promote domestic tourism for international tourists sir uh, one way is to uh, addre- address the demands of international tourists and to ensure that the infrastructure in india uh, caters to their uh, convenience so the major issue with indian tourism is the infrastructure so we need to increase security and uh, convenience uh, for uh, the foreign tourist second sir we can uh, use technology also to uh, to promote uh, advertisement and marketing of tourism across india uh, uh, abroad uh, that uh, we can use ar and vr technology so that uh, the foreign tourist before uh, reaching india they have a bef- uh, first uh, beforehand experience of a place 
thirdly, sir, uh, again we can give incentives. Uh, All like right, med- Dikshita, tell me some qualities that you think you have which will make you a good civil servant. So one is uh, that uh, I have studied engineering. So the analytical skills that I've gained from there and uh, after I have studied humanities, uh, the sociology was my option. So that gives me a more comprehensive outlook. Secondly, sir, um, one distinct trait that I think I have is uh, that I'm a good listener, that I, I like to listen to other people's opinions. And I think that helps me uh, more uh, rela- be, uh, become more reliable and uh, people find it easy to trust in me. So second is that. And uh, third is, sir, uh, that I have a growth mindset. I uh, like to learn and, uh, uh, and I like to learn new disciplines. So the third would be, sir, that, that it is required in civil services also that when you are shifted to different sectors. So these three are major qualities that I think I have. All right. Dikshita, you interview Zoo. Okay. Thank you, sir. You have very good clear communication. You are a slow speaker. You should be in the list.